Greetings and salutations, my friends from Cambridge, my old stomping grounds. I miss it very much. I apologize. I can't be there in person. I was tasked to give a presentation that both an eighth grader and could understand and uh, professors would stay interested in. Uh, that is an impossible task. Uh, to give within <laughs> one hour, but I am going to do my best and I uh, apologize for my failings in this. I am a neural researcher. I've, uh, since childhood, have always wondered how to connect humans, the nervous system, their electrical impulses, uh, into computers. And we have done it. We have done it quite well. I went to many schools and multiple degrees, uh, Ivy Leagues, and I remember Noam Chomsky, one of my favorite linguistic professors and computer natural language processing. And I, uh, studied under Barbara Gross uh, at Harvard at artif in artificial intelligence and I've enjoyed my stay very much. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be back there to present in person. I have many other tasks to do. Um, very quickly, my background uh, Worked for DARPA on projects for the CIA. I've worked on projects for the uh, Department of Defense, Army, Navy. Uh, uh, some of the projects worked on writing the artificial intelligence code, tracked Soviet nuclear submarine fleet, uh, uh, voice morphing, identification recognition. Um, and incorporating all the databases to find terrorists from local, federal levels, uh, many things. And I don't want to really get into my background. I like Socrates' quote, uh, great minds discuss ideas, small minds discuss people. So let's get on with the presentation. Do you want the good news or bad news first? Everybody wants the good news first. So we're going to start off with the positive applications of neurotechnologies and uh, such as locked-in syndrome and paraplegics. We can now actually get into their minds and allow them a gateway to access the outside world. We can allow them to manipulate limbs with just their thoughts alone and their nervous system. Um, we can treat mental illness. We can identify it immediately when it happens. We can, uh, we have so many amazing technologies that you creators are going to come up with as soon as this technology transfer occurs when the military, U.S. government, allows such things to happen or be recreated. But uh, let's talk about uh, one of my favorite inventions. It's called the Empathy Machine. And it's something Facebook is even working on. Uh, it's how do you clone people's emotions on to the other person. Now, as humans, we use body language and we use voice intonations and etc. to express our emotions. Uh, but this is direct. This is direct neural interfacing and manipulation of your moods to enhance communication. I mean, imagine a doctor. Uh, who could feel the pain of their patients and immediately when they come into ER says, oh, that's uh, that's not a, just gas pain. He's actually having uh, pancreat pancreatitis or 
or or let's say a heart attack versus uh, just uh, indigestion. I mean, the doctor, if he would go through such pain and was really dedicated to his work, would be able to uh, identify these things, these illnesses immediately. Um, I mean, you can imagine things like just partners. You said something to me and it made me feel bad. I want you to feel my pain. You feel my emotional pain. It could bring them you know, closer together. I mean, so this could be a therapeutic tool. Um, I mean, the, the list is just huge. I mean, think of United Nations just trying to bring people together. They can't lie under certain circumstances of neural interfacing, which I will get further into. But um, the it's so profound, the fundamental changes of society, which will occur when we come to grips with what us neuroscientists have done and we're willing to adjust as a society. Um, oh, the other topics I'm just reading through my slide. Increased intelligence and productivity. Productivity increases at the speed of light and speed of thought in hive minds. How are you going to beat that? I mean, that is just, that is what we are coming to, and that's that's important, and that's our direction. Um, there's uh, no lie fMRI I mean, a very primitive system right now, but it's been accepted in a few court cases that the perpetrator cannot lie from his own brain. We can identify the signals of recognition of the person and the body and whole bunch of things are going to change in the justice system. But I'll get to some of the questions later, which society really needs to deal with. Uh, speed of thought, connection to the internet. I mean, we're even, we're going past just being able to type into many computers to Google. We're, we're going directly to the source that is going to be amazing. Think of all the new ideas that are going to be created from this. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful idea. I apologize if my gaze isn't directly at the slides, uh, at, at the video. Um, so I already talked about how Facebook had a secret lab. I don't know how secret it is. Been many leaks about it. You know, communicating emotions. I don't know what that looks like exactly. If it's some sort of helmet that you were supposed to put on with uh, magnetic fields around it. Uh, but anyway, it gives you an idea that these technologies are getting more advanced. Sony has patents on video games that you feel the real pain while you're doing it. Um, I I just love all the applications that are going to be coming out, hopefully in my lifetime. Shared dreams and experiences. Wow. So I get to buy or rent a dream a night like a movie you know and they're rated and i get to say oh, i want the i want the action adventure dream and i can rate that uh i mean i can buy that uh you know also here here's the one that most colleges will not like probably is accelerated education and skill set uh, learning and while you learn a lot in school that is definitely not in the textbooks just meeting a lot of smart people around you having the after hours discussions and uh, thinking for yourself in a free space 
that cannot necessarily be duplicated, but what we can do, and I can show in my neural network models, very fundamental models, obviously, but the, the theories can be extended and have been done, but I'm not supposed to say that, to the full human brain. We can clone skills and uh, education and a tenth of the time it would take the average person to learn it. Um, let's talk about our prisoner system dilemma. Fifteen states pay more for the prison systems than they do for education. Uh, there's no winning solution in that, and clearly the the prisoners, uh, very few actually get corrected, as the system is called correctional education. This, if they opt for it, could get them released much sooner, and we wouldn't have problems with that. Uh, behavior modification for the individuals, such as, I want to quit smoking or lose weight, or I'm addicted to Oxycontin, or whatever the population problems are at the time, these technologies can cure them. I'm, I am not exaggerating. Uh, mood alteration, obviously, uh, uh, drug companies get big bucks for uh, their pharmaceuticals for depression, and uh, I think various drugs, at least dealing with the mind. Uh, some pharmaceutical companies uh, are looking into it called electrocuticals, and it's how to alter the moods of the individual just using various neuromodulation stimuli. But bigger profits and pills. And I don't think I need to say much more about that. But think about now the entertainment industry. I've already talked about, you know, buying dreams or renting them. Uh, but the, the entertainment industry will explode. They'll be the biggest market. Uh, right now, uh, well, or it was at least 10 years ago, uh, the U.S.'s biggest export was their culture. Um, this will be even a bigger export. Um, um, it, you know, it's virtual reality, vacations without the price or risk, uh, and you get all the memories. Everyone's seen the movie Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Similar to that, these are real technologies we have today that are coming out. Sweet, now we're on the slide. My favorite topics, uh, neurobionics and neurorobotics. And I know that some people find this a turn off, but uh, it's impossible. Uh, I mean, just wearing glasses is a man made device. You're already part bionic. Um, but anyway, we get here, we can. Uh, extend our bodies from our mind. We can create exoskeletons with more power, more lifting power, uh, and to do things that our very fragile human bodies cannot do. And that's exciting to me. And that's what I've always had a passion for, brain-to-computer interfacing. Even the brain itself can be substituted and put into other components, material. It is the signals, the signals of the soul, which get amplified. Uh, what we're doing here is creating a meta cortex already on top of the neocortex for feedback, more intelligence, more self-examination of the sense of self that we have, which will be blurred in the future when we go to hive minds. And that will be blurred. 
uh, who's in control exactly? Oh, you know, with these neural communications, but I'll explain uh, in future lectures uh, how self-organizing intelligence systems, cybernetics work, and it will work itself out uh, as long as there's not too much human tampering by governments within the self-organizational process. I know that's uh, a far cry from reality, but uh, we're creating brain nets. Uh, so many amazing things are about to happen after the singularity. Okay, I warned you. Uh, that was the good news. Now it's time to present the bad news. And I apologize if my tone becomes more dark. But uh, these are the dark sides of uh, neurotechnologies and what governments use them for. Uh, and we have uh, quite a few decades advanced research on the civilian scientists. Uh, for obvious reasons of national defense. But let me kind of set the mood by reading uh, a professor of psychology or uh, neuropsychiatry at Yale um, Medical School. And he, in the 1960s, he did a lot of research of that was quite unethical, but for the Cold War, for some reason, it was allowed, and it continues today. And I may or may not tell you stories about my personal experiences of observing uh, the capabilities of human suffering that is uh, allowed for weapons development, but. Dr. Jose Gil Delgado is his name, and he was kind of considered the father of brain chips. The quote is, we need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. This lacks historical perspective. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. This kind of liberal orientation has great appeal. We must electronically control the brain. Some days, armies and generals will be controlled electronically by stimulation of the brain. Wow. Uh, and that was in 1974. I, I'm horrified, I hope you are too, that uh, a man of his stature would uh, make such claims. Now, as long as as scientists are conscientious about their intentions, both good or evil, um, we might be able to get through this next uh, phase of human evolution uh, that's occurring very rapidly. And so, uh, just because I need to uh, take a, a short break, a glass of water, I'm going to display a film about some audio technologies that uh, MIT, many corporations, uh, uh, come up with, and then I will explain how they can be used in detrimental ways and need to be regulated and at least noticed by the public. There have been recent advances in acoustic technology which can transmit sound great distances with a very narrow target range. The long-range acoustic device is one such technology. 
and is currently employed by both military and commercial sea vessels to deter potential attackers. In San Diego, California, Woody Norris, developer of the LRAD, describes another of his acoustic technologies known as hypersonic sound. It's kind of like uh, radio stations, except in this case, you don't need a receiver. To hear a radio station, I gotta have a receiver. With this, the mixing actually happens in the air, and you hear it without any other device. So if I aim it at you, and it happens to hit both of your ears, and I'm reluctant to say this, it'll be as though the sound is inside your head. This time I'll come all the way around in case you're getting a lot of echo from the room. The observation of the phenomena came way back during the uh, Second World War, and the, uh, the radar operators you know, accidentally noticed that when they stand in front of the uh, uh, radar, sometimes you can hear uh, clicks in their head. Uh, somebody by the name of uh, Alan Fry who had talked to some of the radar operators based on their uh, report, and he conducted a very simple uh, laboratory experiment indeed show that human beings can hear the radar pulses. They were not just you know, making it up. In ordinary uh, sound perception, sound that goes into the uh, ear canal gets amplified by the small bones in the middle ear and then gets to the inner ear where the cochlea resides and in the cochlea is converted to electrical impulse. But fundamentally the physical phenomenon that enables it is mechanical movement of particles. So the mechanical wave transmitted by the bones of the middle ear gets converted at the inner ear into the uh, electrical impulses. But in the case of a micro, the auditory effect is the source is electromagnetic. So if you expose the biological tissue to a pulse of uh, microwave energy, the tissue expands and induces a vibration. Instead of going through the middle ear, the microwave-induced vibration gets propagated to the inner ear directly, and at the inner ear is converted to electrical impulses again. And in this case, a vibration in the human tissue, if the tissue is the head, for example, will fall within the auditory range of a human uh, subject. People now are talking about, actually, uh, direct communication. But like we mentioned, you know, sending a message uh, you know, to the air to a person without anybody else uh, being aware of it. That is within the realm of possibility. I don't know whether it's true or not. I think uh, there's a sizable number of people who think this is being used for mind control. Mind control is... I think if somebody who wants to do it, there is the potential. Now, that wasn't a bad video by any means, and uh, it uh, showed some of the LRAD characteristics. Uh, nothing really all that shocking for most people, at least in the field. Um, the I want to talk about some of the newer technologies, like MIT just came out with laser heating effect, uh, which amplifies the molecular energy of water in the air before it hits the air. Now that's uh, that's pretty interesting. That's kind of cool. Um, the effects that it has in the body are still unknown. It's probably minimal. But uh, that something that subtle can create a directed beam of sound uh, or perception, which 
then gets translated into electronic signals into the brain and interpreted as speech and what or or sound. Uh, it showed the audio spotlight, which used uh, the ultrasonic uh, heterogyning within the ear within the air itself to mix uh, the uh, above hearing sound patterns, vibrational patterns, into a pattern that the ear can hear. Now, more interestingly, and they're doing some great research here at the uh, University of Arizona on holographic brain patterning. And what that means is they're using ultrasound through the skull in specific patterns to influence heat the tissue or change uh, the synaptic connection duration, the expansion of the tissue, so to speak, um, to alter brain patterns. And that is really interesting stuff. And I think there's there should be more investment in that area. Uh, there are some old technologies that Google caught on to for their Google Glasses, which never really caught on in terms of public acceptance. They use bone conductance. It just, uh, if you touch the, the skull anywhere, the jawbone or the head or somewhere else, uh, the vibrations get sent up to the inner ear. And, that makes it sound like audio is coming right directly from the center of your head. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the active denial system, some microwave uh, neural weapons or neurotechnologies. Remember, everything can be weaponized. Uh, this one is uh, 95 gigahertz. It's uh, heats the outer layer of the skin, the tissue which contains the sensors for heat perception of the human. That uh, then induces, you know, severe pain, brain signals. Um, the CI uses it as a uh, infinite torture device uh, for their guests and their safe houses. Uh, and it leaves, you know, no marks if used correctly, burning of tissue. And so it's called the no-touch torture system, but it's also a non-lethal weapon system device. Chinese brag about they have it, and the uh, Raytheon is the one that developed it in our country. And uh, the Marines were not allowed to have it for whatever reason because of long term damage we are unsure of during war, even though you're killing people. But anyway, radio uh, frequency microwave hearing effect, they covered that in that last video. Very, very interesting because uh, there were uh, many scientists were arguing what is the actual mechanism of the radio microwave hearing effect and they finally concluded that it's actually <laughs> it's kind of bad uh, heating of the brain tissue itself. And the brain is pulsing from the heat expansion, the what's called SARS specific absorption rate, and then shrinking and cooling quickly. And that this uh, uh, vibration to the brain goes into the inner ear, which then causes the perception of sound, voices, whatever you want to transmit. Um, but that, that vibration to the brain is like many concussions. And you're going to, in victims uh, that uh, this has been used on, probably like the Cuba embassy attacks, you're going to see uh, scarring and uh, traumatic brain injury uh, of the brain tissue over time. Um, there, and I didn't even list this one on the slide, but obviously something like the gamma knife or 
anytime you can focus energy, EM, electromagnetic energy, onto a specific point, whatever that resonance may be, or that specific point in space-time may be, you're going to heat the tissue, and yeah, this is ways we can kill you while you're sleeping in your bed, fry your brain, your internal organs, cause uh, increased cancer rates, depending on the frequencies and whether it does DNA damage. And, um, but anyway, we're trying to stay focused on neural weapons. Um, there are some ways which you can sensitize the target of uh, using neuromodulation methods, uh, such as uh, University of uh, Nevada. Uh, I don't know if the research is still top secret or wasn't and now is, but uh, the U.S. Air Force uh, consigned them to develop a dopamine dump, a non-lethal weapon, and that just means they resonated the cells which produce uh, dopamine to flood the brain with dopamine and they become disabled and can't think clearly. And it was considered a, a battlefield non-lethal weapon. But you can do this, remember, with any neuro uh, transmitter or... or I won't even get into the details of it, but we can talk about um, ways to do that with uh, everything has resonance. Ionic channel protein conformational changes. You can uh, unlock uh, even DNA strands using uh, certain radio frequencies, and those could include cancer-causing ones. Um, you can, um, for more immediate effects, uh, alter the uptake, uh, the reuptake of uh, ionic uh, uh, ions such as uh, sodium and potassium and calcium. Uh, uh, let me just move on quickly so I can get through this presentation. <laughs> uh, you know, the MIT created genetically blue light mice. Well, we've been splicing genes for a long time. And uh, this is just a new idea of civilian scientists. Very good for research. Uh, Harvard has their uh, rainbow mice, I believe they call them. Um, and it's great for research. But, of course, there's always the weaponized version, which we can use a cold virus, a viral infection to all of humanity, and make them susceptible to whatever frequency we want them, their brains to be susceptible to. Uh, there are other technologies, uh, neural dust, which uh, is is so small you can inhale it, it can be ingested. Uh, very, and these are just really small microchips that help amplify uh, neural signals in various ways. Uh, uh, and then magneto nanoparticles. And again, this is nothing new. The, the brain actually naturally has many of those particles in them. You can amplify it that way, which makes them more receptible to an electromagnetic or magnetic uh, signal and modulating them. Um, I'm going to not talk about uh, just yet, uh, and I got to see if I have time, the uh, audio cortex hacking and subsystems of the brain. I developed some models of my own uh, in the last few months just to demonstrate how you can create an encrypted signal from any two minds uh, using uh, the natural learning process of the brain um, that are only understood between those two minds and that it would appear like noise if someone 
we're trying to decrypt those two channels between those brains, but yet they're hearing speech in between them. And that is true synthetic telepathy. I know I'm not the first to create this. I uh, may be the first to talk about it, and I'll write up a paper about it in more detail. This is just supposed to be a broad interview of uh, the various technologies we can use to hack the human brain. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. I love JFK. He was such an inspirational speaker. Uh, too bad he had to die so young. You know, there is a huge issue, clearly, with neuroweapons. We, man, mankind wants to be free and independent, as JFK said. This takes away his free will. And we have to define more precisely what is free will, what is self-autonomy, and uh, is there such a thing, or should we admit that democracy was an illusion to begin with? There are many methods, tactics used in conjunction with neuroweapons, such as the ones developed by a, a Dr. Ewan Cameron, who was president at the time of the psychiatry community and very respected man, but uh, he took some money from the CIA, conducted some ethical experiments uh, in Canada, uh, and uh, he turned some people into vegetative states who came in for mild depression. Uh, Congress eventually awarded the family uh, you know, half a million dollars or something. I don't remember the number. But uh, the cover-up was uh, incredible. And these were important in Cold War experiments. But these haven't stopped. And it's kind of a joke that we paid those guys, uh, those, psych those uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, $30 million or more to develop enhanced interrogation techniques. We, we've known how to torture people for a long time. That, that, that is a, such a joke for the public, I guess. Um, anyway, she, this poor woman who's a housewife had to learn how to urinate and talk again. He used uh, a two-track tape of depression. Y your mother hates you, your father hates you, and your scum, a typical brainwashing, of course, that's used in the military. You're a worm, and if you think like we do, then you're something greater. 
all tribes do this as forms of indoctrination. Um, and uh, I want to get into even more detail of some of the horrors of interrogation and counterintelligence methods, but I myself do not have the stomach to describe what uh, uh, a faction of my government does, so I'm going to not talk about it. What I will talk about uh, instead in replacement is uh, more immediate threats of artificial intelligence in the middle attacks. And I guess I coined the term, but uh, the, the issue is uh, with these technologies, we can now have an, uh, an AI, short for artificial intelligence, attack the brains between two connected individuals in these mind hive links. Uh, I know it's complex and I should have more slides to demonstrate uh, or show how these interconnections work and hopefully by the time I give this interview <clears throat> I'll have some slides ready uh, to show how it is done. I've successfully done it several times myself. Uh, not between real humans but between synthetic minds. Um, and neuro linguistic programming uh, is something you should look up if you don't know about. It is a very important part in hacking the, uh, the more educated and enlightened uh, humanoids on this planet. Um, so I'm going to move on. I work for the Central Intelligence Agency on the MK Ultra program. Are you familiar with it? It was mind control, Manchurian candidate kind of stuff. That's a vulgar generalization, but yes, uh, you take an ordinary man and turn him into an assassin. That was our goal. Now, MK Ultra was terminated in 1973, but not the the research that I continued. Shall I go on? The truth will set you free. It involved hallucinogenic research, electroshock to induce vegetative states, terminal experiments. Veritas, Latin for truth, and that's a Harvard shield. But notice the third book is folded over, very significant in life, which means not all knowledge can be gained from books or the internet. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Many great presidents have obviously warned us of uh, what is going to happen and what has occurred. I'm going to just go through some historical examples which have not been taught in U.S. history to your children. There are hundreds of uncovered human experimentation projects that our own government has done on its citizens. And there are so many people that live in denial that there is no way this would ever happen. And it's, it's been happening, it continues to happen. And, uh, you know, I feel bad for those people that live in Disneyland uh, type existences uh, who can't handle reality. But uh, historical examples, Operation Seabreeze, the Navy uh, uh, was testing viral warfare off the coast of San Francisco. Uh, it was a benign virus, uh, much like the common cold, and it's, uh, it had a greater infection rate than they were expecting. Uh, they were very happy with the results. Um, 
syphilis experiments, the uh, Tuskegee, uh, you know, often throughout history before uh, black people had uh, the opportunity to even be recognized as full citizens, uh, we used them as experimentation and syphilis was a bacterial warfare experiment that we did and re you know down syndrome children obviously can't uh, defend themselves or talk for themselves so we did radiation experiments on them uh, uh, to see what the death and cancer rates would be uh, and then we sprayed black neighborhoods with something that was supposed to be a supposed radar shield uh, but really, uh, it was a eugenics program. Um, and of course, everyone's heard of the CIA's LSD experiments in the 60s, uh, dosing people. Um, they, the public never got to know the real reasons uh, that they were doing that. Uh, I don't have time to go into it. But uh, do your research. These are things not taught in textbooks that might give you a better perspective before you decide to become government property. I've personally interviewed well over a thousand victims of uh, mind control research uh, from, you know, who. and what really is incredible to me uh, after going through this exercise is why no civilian practitioners and researchers have done it. They, uh, I mean, they're paid obviously just to follow their textbooks and dish out drugs accordingly, but it becomes quite obvious that there is a huge failure of our legal system, of our political system. I personally went with the Los Angeles FBI uh, head to Congress. We met with 23 senators, uh, uh, and this was before Trump, so this is not current by any means. Um, and uh, we met with the all the agencies, uh, sub-agencies. The, uh, uh, the one that, the interview that struck me most interesting was the Senate Intelligence Committee. We went there, and the guy was uh, a Harvard grad, I assume from their law school or politics. But we go there, and he's uh, he was one representative of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, and we, we wanted to talk about MK Ultra and the continuation of it, um, and he had never heard of it, and I blushed. I was quite embarrassed that he was from one of my institutions, and um, he's part uh, of being the oversight committee of exactly what you don't want these agencies to be doing to the public. Anyway, that's a personal story. Um, the ignorance of practitioners and doctors, obviously we've seen this in the Cuban embassy attacks and Chinese embassy attacks. Uh, they simply, they aren't trained. Again, we keep this out of their textbooks. We put it into the psychology and psychiatry textbooks, and that's a way to dismiss the actual biocorrelation signals of what we are doing and hide our experimentation within the general um, imbalanced uh, people. We even saw the Bioethics Committee set up by Hillary Clinton and gave the complaints that these we've done a lot of research not government funded independent researchers and of course what what do you get from all politicians oh that's that's great but uh, nothing ever happens um, 
Um, you know, it, it, that, that's again another lecture on the failure of uh, our democracy. But um, there's even that there's very little mass media coverage of something that is happening worldwide uh, and of such great importance uh, and has been happening for decades. People think we live in a free society, and that's just, you live in a bubble of information, and you don't know what the truth is, and that's the truth. All right. Uh, okay, we're on a new slide, but uh, I have something to say about the other slide. I at least am hopeful uh, because the U.S. government no longer uses counterintelligence of UFO abductions and uh, the psychic spies and whatnot that came forward. Uh, we'll just call them the men who stare at goats and stuff. At least their counterintelligence uh, propaganda is past that phase. But I'm very disappointed in the Russians who just recently came out and said, that there you have a psychic spy army which is trained to take over mines and look inside safes and everything else. They're, they're still trying to hide neurotechnology weapons and they're very old and uh, I guess we shouldn't expect more from them. So these kind of weapons have existed easily before the 1960s, really didn't uh, roll out and come online until like 1976, uh, ramped up quite a bit after 9-11, and you see the increases of targets based on the uh, military budgets, but uh, that's really not here or there. So let's just talk about Bush was the decade of the brain. Why are we so interested in the brain? Um, you know, if you look at the economics of mental illness for what all this money could possibly be used for to help the paraplegics, and it's just not worth it. You can't justify it. So there has to be you know, the wartime weapon, and Obama called it the brain initiative, and, uh, you know, mapping out the brain gnome, like the human genome, and this is, uh, this is about war, this is about controlling the humans, all of, all of you, not, not just ones in other countries. Uh, Trump continued the research, unknown to him, um, and they, they refunded it, uh, and I'm, I'm sure the mentality, as always, is if we don't do it, someone else will. Well, yeah, that will be the end of the human race, as we know it, but that's fine. That's fine. The subtext is to get these weapons uh, more refined, really, uh, by sampling more mines. And they also want to hide this very dark period of 60 years of torturous, murderous, silent assassination, secret stealing, influencing democracies um, from the public. And so they want civilian scientists to sort of rediscover what we've done in our secret labs. And that's just, you know, it's just politics. Um, eventually, all this can only end one way, and this is brain nets and hive minds, uh, and I'll discuss that later. I'm running out of time, um, but all human minds will be connected and regulated, and you'll probably have thought police. But uh, I know a lot of uh, students listening to this lecture are influenced by the motivation of greed to pay off their student loans. Now, if you can come up with a firewall, thought filters for the human mind, you will be richer than Elon Musk. But you need to think about what that means. 
very deeply. What you you cannot have democracies with such things. Now some exciting stuff for the morally flexibles, and you know who you are out there. Want to work for the agencies? Uh, even civilian scientists have been able to find ways using you know, less than three hundred dollars on willing subjects to steal passwords from their mind. Uh, in another lecture, I'm doing a summit on uh, cyber crimes and uh, uh, bioethics of hacking the human mind uh, in late July. Uh, hopefully you'll see me there. And I'll go into more detail of how that's done. Uh, but the more advanced technologies that we use in the government uh, we can steal your passwords uh, while you're dreaming and interrogate your mind. We can find building layouts and all the security systems within those buildings. Uh, it's uh, it's quite fascinating, and it's it's an art as well as a science in probing minds, and it's been kind of covered up by the mystical ideas and words called psychic spying, but it's really neurological cloning is what we're doing. Uh, the actual uh, Marines that we use don't even know how the technology works. They just offered their minds uh, for this uh, experimentation or psychic warrior interfacing. Um, we use it to get contacts who the terrorist networks are or the enemy. Now, if you're an enemy of the state, well, that's your family and friends. Um, we can uh, mentally disable you. De we can demoralize the enemy. Now, again, enemy is a relative term, and you're a hero on one side and the enemy on the other, but... Uh, using many of these neurotechnologies and techniques, and more known they are, I, I know I'm probably an enemy of the state now, the, the more they're known about, the less effect they'll have. Um, but uh, there's a much more important conversation that the human race needs to have right now, and that's why I'm willing to talk about them. Uh, we can alter decision-making in real time. I mean, if you're the guy on the nuclear button, we can tell you to press it or not. Uh, we can, under the right conditions, we can use something called forced speech, which is an urge or pattern in the brain to make you say certain words. So let's say you're a politician and you're on uh, the microphone we can make you say a different phrase than you intended to say. Now, obviously, there should be a discussion about this because there's no democracy if we can do this to all candidates. Um, we can subliminally alter the thought processes of other leaders. Now, you say that's good with North Korea or whoever the enemy is at the time that uh, my country determines, um, but that is certainly not democracy, certainly not freedom of thought, and I don't know if we should be going about it in that way, but all's fair in love and war, right? One of the things I forgot to mention, uh, neurological weapons are more than just the information that affects the mind or how you can damage the mind. Uh, there are more electrical uh, systems in the human body, such as the heart. And we have created ways to create arrhythmias, uh, heart attacks of, under various conditions of the target human. So, Neurological weapons also incorporates that. But anyway, uh, let's get back to this slide. Remote interrogation, no touch torture. I am running out of time. 
So I suggest you look up uh, Operation Northwoods and learn what that was about. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to let you do your own research on what really transpires behind the curtain of the wizard of national security. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that one way or another it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that uh there are many sociopaths, psychopaths in society of all walks of life. And um, especially when you're younger, you can be persuaded more easily. And hence, we called them morally flexibles. So one of my buddies said in the CIA, we're not looking for saints or angels. Uh, war is hell. So in this slide, uh, there's a weapon system acronym, SATAN, Silent Assassination, through so Adaptive Neural Networks, and these are neural weapons we've been using for a long time. Uh, I, I don't have much time left, so TAMI is an older system, a, a subsystem called Thought and Memory Interface. REHEC was a CIA one called Remote Hypnotic Interstitial Control. It's very early research on how we correlate the hypnotic pulses, align them in the target brain uh, for the macro and micro circuitry. Uh, Alice, just because I know this is being uh, shown at MIT, was just a chatterbot, it's supposed to be fun, waste people's time. Uh, we see them all the time on Facebook and etc. And that was weaponized, of course, to, as one colonel said, we will find a way to talk the target to their death using some of the other technologies uh, that I mentioned earlier. I wanted to get into the more advanced technologies, which cannot be blocked easily, but I will have to save that for another lecture. Um, but, you know, it, it's pretty funny. The Russians did it, too. The... The, those that are political descent or you need to dispose of uh, this weapon's perfect because uh, usually it causes uh, almost some form of mental illness during the rehabilitation process, um, so to speak. And they get labeled mentally ill and fed drugs. And, you know, those people that feed them drugs... Uh, while that's all they know, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, they're, they have no motivation to find the true source of what might be causing these biocorrelated signals into the brain. My time has come to an end. I was allotted uh, one hour, and I'm only a few minutes over it. I want to thank everybody who's made it this far in this presentation to get at least an idea of where we are, how far we've come, what's been hidden from them, and really the big questions is what I was trying to bring up for debate. And this is a harbinger for humanity, a warning to them. Uh, is Are these technologies, these neurotechnologies, of a form of enslavement, ultimately? Uh, or does it allow us greater freedom and even self-control? We 
you you need to think about this very deeply. These are fundamental to our species and where we're going. Uh, we can think of the good things such as there's no more wars. We're all thought controlled and within boundaries, uh, yet we have higher intelligence, so that's more creativity. But if you travel the world, then you will find no cultural diversity, so there will be no point in traveling. We are ultimately coming to a global hive mind, which uh, will it allow individualism or and bring the human race closer together or is it robotizing the human race uh justice is going to be turned on its head how can you have intellectual property rights if we're all sharing thoughts uh religion is going to be turned on its head because how can you have free will if you're being controlled as an individual in economics, well, we're already manipulating markets accordingly and, uh, that I shouldn't talk about, but you'll understand it in the future. Lack of privacy or, uh, or will it be a world without lies and crime? Wow, that, that sounds wonderful, but can I go to the toilet without someone watching? You know, it's something a culture might have to get used to. So we're going to undergo quite a cataclysmic evolutionary change of our species and culture. But the big warning here is can a total totalitarian government assassinate your brain print, your uniqueness, without a trial or any other means that we find fair, uh, or can you even have a simple thought? Are we going to have thought police uh, and re-education camps and et cetera? And these are the issues I want to bring up with this lecture because this is happening now. This, this isn't something uh, from 1984 of uh, the book. The, this is already happening, and you people, you need to debate this and force your congressman to debate this because they're too busy in their own bubble of nonsense. So write your senators, write your congressmen. Thank you very much uh, for allowing me to present to you. Um, I'm just merely a watcher over the human race, a recorder of man's deeds and keeper of his conscience. Um, I hope that you found this uh, at least useful and you will act upon it accordingly. Good night.